my name is Scott Hampton. I want to welcome you to my shop here in Visalia, California. Show you behind me my gnome army. Let me ask here. There they are. That's one picture. There we go. That's just about half of what I made last year. Different kinds of hats, plenty of hats, colored hats, top hats. You got a couple of beanies, as you can see, with the, especially that guy in the front there. People like those. And then I got Santa gnomes. Santa gnomes, they're everywhere. People really love these. I'm not going to quite do the same thing for the hats. I'm not. I, I get beads at the at the craft craft stores like Hobby Lobby and Michaels. And that's what those little bobbles on top are. I'll put a piece of wire in there and epoxy it all together and stick it in the hat. And people really seem to like those. It sets them off a little bit better than having that, that piece of wood like this guy on top. But this is what we're going to make today. It's the, the wood bead on top and a, and a nose for the Santa. And we're, this is New Year's Eve. This is what our New Year's Eve gnomes look like. Got a horn. <laughs> my, my wife is a leather worker, and on this one, she actually tooled the, tooled the leather saying New Year's Eve 2021. That was always, that was really popular. That was a commission piece. Somebody really wanted a New Year's Eve gnome, so that's what we made them. So. All right, so the first thing I've got here is a two by two by three and a half inch piece of maple dowel. It's the kind you use for closets and stuff. You can get it at Lowe's or Home Depot. They're about a four foot section for about $10. So you can get a lot of gnomes out of a piece like this. That's for sure. And what I want to do is I want to shape it like this. The hat goes on a narrow end, and I leave this bottom part pretty much two inches as close as possible. And I do do a slight undercut underneath so it sits nice and flat on the table. I fill a small hole for his nose, and if I put arms in him like we're going to do today for the, the gnome that's going to be holding the wreath, I would put three holes. And then this hole up here is to help hold the hat on the hat with a dowel. The dowel will go in here and the hat will have so you have a hole in it too and just kind of do it all together. A little extra security instead of just gluing the hat on a really thin along the brim there. This really helps hold the gnomes together. So. And then later on, after we get the parts made, we'll go to my workbench and we'll cut out some beards and put these guys together and add them. Give him a little character. So let's get started turning. First thing I want to do is I just want to true it up because no matter what I do, it's not going to exactly run true. And I put it in the jaws of the chuck. This is a talon chuck, the number two jaws. So I'm just going to use a small roughing gouge. This is one, one inch. I always have to check this every time. This, oh, it's three quarter. Yeah, I always mess that up. And I turn up the speed of quite a bit, about 2000 RPMs. This is a small piece. It's not really going to go anywhere. It's really clamped in there tight. And you just do some gentle cuts. You want to start about in the middle and work your way towards the tail stock end of your leg. And we're just going to kind of true it up first just to get any rid of any vibrations that might be happening. And when you get closer to the chuck, you want to just do some small pill, pilling cuts. And then we can just go back and forth using the point right here of the tool. And that'll really clean up any tool marks left behind. That's just an added bonus tip there. We don't really need to worry about the full market this time. And then I want to get my parting tool. And I just want to screw up the face of this. And I'll go to the three cameras there so you guys can see that. 
And we're just gonna just take a nice shade. This it doesn't take much. It's just not really running out of true and it was cut pretty straight using a chop saw. Or my band saw, I can't look I go back and forth as far as cutting these things up. I think the bandsaw does a better job of it. And because I did this, there's a really sharp corner right there. And if you touch it with your hand, it could actually cut you worse than a paper cut. And they'll cauterize it at the same time, and that really hurts. So I'm just going to bring my parting tool on an angle, and just try to round it over with a small chamfer there. That way you can do actually hit it. It's not going to cut you or hurt you or anything. So now I, what I want to do, same parting tool, I want to put a divot right in the middle. This is to help guide the drill bit when we drill the, the hole for the, the dowel. I'm going to take my time making this one and then I'll go into production mode and you can see how fast these things can really be made. It doesn't take much. So I want to drill it out first. I'm going to change my glasses to more focused glasses there. A little more magnification so I can see what I'm doing. All right, so I've got a half inch portioner bit in here. I'm going to grab that, the body of that other one I made. I just want to see how deep I go. So I'm use veneer calipers. For that. And I'm just going to open it up and use the depth gauge right, right there on the end there and you can just bring it all down to the, the bottom of the hole there. The battery's dying. Oh, it's three quarters of an inch. Oh, it's right on the money. I have a, I usually don't measure them, but I'm going to do that for this demo. So I'm going to grab me a marker and I'm going to imagine, I'm going to put a three quarter inch mark on my drill bit. There about, so if I go a little bit deeper than that, I'm just going to mark it a three quarter and then go past that mark a little way. Just to give it a little more room for glue, squeeze out. The glue always seems to puddle in the bottom of a, a, mo a mortise like that. You want room for that glue to dry and, and expand in the wood. All right, so you can see the little mark right there. And you always want to hold on to your the truck because it, if it grabs inside the wood, it can make it spin and whip out and actually cause it to come out of your tailstock and send the whole air, whole setup flying and it's not a pleasant thing to happen. This wood's pretty kind of soft. It's not the hardest maple in the world. So there's the mark. So I'm going to stand it a little bit deeper. Probably just up to that tip right there. Next thing I want to do, get that a pair of veneer calipers again. This way you can just duplicate everything. This is a different pair. And I want to measure how deep I want or how wide I want that top part to be. I find this is a good size for all the hats I make. So that's how narrow. If it goes a little bigger or a little smaller, it's not a big deal. This is a general size. Doesn't have to be exact, exact. That'll give me a, a good target to go after. So I'm going to grab that roughing out gouge again and just work it down before I grab a spindle gouge. I'm going to start doing the general shaping. Hmm, one thing I wanted to do. I'm going to put my mind. I'm going to get that body again and measure how long I want, how tall is it? You can, I make these different sizes, like I usually make these like a 
inch and a half for the body, but you can make them tall and thin, you can make them short and squat. There's a whole bunch of different ways you can make these. So right there is the size of the body I want. I'm gonna hold up the body there just to make sure I got it. And I missed it just a little bit. So I'm gonna pull that pencil line down just a little. No. And I just want to shape this down. Working my way towards the tail stock and working my my way back towards the, the lines as I go. Making the top thinner each time. Now I'm just going to hold this up and just get a good idea. I'm pretty much there. So I don't want to go any thinner on the top. So I just want to kind of round the rest of this guy. Give him a good round body here. And not work. And just kind of pull out of the cut before you get to the top. So now I'm just going to grab me my regular spindle gouge so I can do some cleanup cuts. This is a half inch spindle gouge. And I want to just grab, start rubbing the bevel there, lift up the handle a little bit until I start getting a cut. The fluid is about 45 degrees angle away from me. Sometimes these cuts are a little hard to get going. I tend to do a better job of making a curve going towards the headstock than I can the tail stock. It's different for everybody. So we can just grab whatever sandpaper you want. I usually use 120 because it'll do a really good job of cleaning up any pull marks on this maple. You want to turn down your lathe about 5 600 so you don't overheat everything in the sandpaper in the wood. You don't have to put a really good finish on this. In fact, I usually don't put a finish at all on the body part. So now I want to decide where I want his nose to be. Do I want this to be on the back if you turn him over? You want kind of nice grain to look? You want straight grain or you want that kind of grain? I like that, so I want that on the back. This is where his beard will be in his nose. And on this pre-made one, it is about a half inch down from the top or 10 millimeters, however you want to measure it. I, I'm trying to get used to doing millimeters to find that I can do a better job of measuring that way. You don't have to, you don't have to worry about three 76 and 70 seconds and that kind of stuff. <laughs> so this is a very small bit. I'm not sure. I'll have to take it out and check it. I'm just going to measure that. Let me do it by eye. But I haven't really gotten into production mode of these things yet. I want to. I'm going to show you something in a second. Behind me, I'm going to show you guys a slide of the army of gnomes I made last year. So we're just going to go straight in. There we go. We went and we got into that drilled out part, and that's fine. And we're just going to turn on the sand, the, the blaze one more time to sand that area just to get rid of any bits that the drill bit might have left behind. There we go. Nice and smooth. Pretty good there. So what I want to do now is just grab my parting tool. And I just want to make a slight concave on the top right here. Just slightly. So the, just in case this is kind of domed out, 
you don't want the hat sitting on that domed area there or it won't seat pop properly. It's better to have a concave and that way the hat will sit all the way around this wide brim there of the body. So just a slight concave, it doesn't have to be really major or anything. You don't need to sand it. I'd rather not sand it because the, it leaves a key for the glue to hold on to. If you sand it, it, the glue has a tougher time grabbing hold. So now we want to part this guy off. Regular parting tool, 1A parting tool here. I'm going to turn up the speed again. I'm going to go straight in first. And I'm going to open this cut up so it doesn't close up on me. The curve doesn't. Now I'm going to come back with the point here. And I'm just going to bring it in on a slant. Create that concave all the way down to the bottom. And I'm almost all the way through now. I'm going to go, go. I'm not going to quite cut them all the way off. I'm just going to leave it just enough wood there. That's really thin, and look at that, it's still staying on there. Wood is something else, isn't it? So I'm just going to touch this part, hopefully it won't come off. See this little, little fuzz off of there from the parting tool. Round that over a little bit. Let me turn off the lathe. Grab it, and it'll twist right off. Like that. And we'll just come back and peel those off of there. Just a little nubbin. That's the curse of wood turning. Yep. Leave nubbins everywhere I go. <laughs> so I already have that pre body made, so I'm just going to make one more. I don't bore you guys with just making bodies after bodies. But what I normally do. So I'll put a piece of wood in here that's long enough to make at least two bodies. It's a little faster that way. I might get three bodies out of this. I'm not sure. I'm just going to make the one though. Depends on how fast I go. Check the... Well, this is really out of true. I didn't tight the, tighten the jaws all the way so I can get this running as true as I can. Come on. Woo. You gotta just nurse it along. There we go. That's what we're gonna get. We can tighten it down. The reason why I like to make these long ones too is every time you make a body on a short piece, they're leaving that much wood in the chuck. And that adds up when you're making a lot of gnomes like I do. But I don't want to waste all this wood, so I try to get as much overhang here so I can get one, two, three bodies out of just this piece. And it is probably at least six inches protruding out of there. Just about six. Like I said, you can make the bodies a little shorter, a little longer, it's with all your preference. This one that we just made is a little over an inch and a half. So this, this piece is like 140 millimeters. So I could probably get three bodies out of that. That's production turning. So I'm just going to get into that real quick to show you how fast I can get these turned out it does get a little boring making the same thing over and over again or at least it can be let that be mine where did I put it there you are in the wrong spot no tell center I don't need a tell center for this we are gonna drill these out you can make a piece that's overhanging this far as long as you got a good hold with the chuck I've made pieces longer than this without really thin, thin pieces, like, let me find that. I've had a little something, I thought I did. There it is. You can actually make really thin pieces like this. 
without using the Pell Center as a as for support. The wood is really resilient, it won't break, it can bend a little bit, maybe wobble a little bit when you get down towards the bottom, but once you're done up here, you just leave it alone. So that's the trick to these. So I'm just gonna true up this whole piece real quick, maybe get two two gnomes out, out of it just so I can show you how fast we can make this in production work. There's a fly on my wood there. A little too fast, got some vibration there. So I got about 2100 RPMs. Same thing, just work your way back towards the tail spot. I want the arms about right here. I'm just going to put a pivot there for the drill bit. I'm going to come around and get it up. See that chain line on there. Nose one, two, one, two. I'm going to add here. That's pretty much. You use the grain to measure out what some of this stuff is. That's what you want. Now the trick to these arms, you want them to come straight out. So I'm going to put my spindle lock in. That way I can drill a straight hole right in there. Not come at it on an angle like this. You want to come attack it straight in. And we're going to wood turn all these body parts, the noses and the bobble for the hat. There you go. Be deep enough. Good. And I'm just gonna oops. Gotta take my lock out of my way. Okay. And sand this again.
All right, we got our three bodies made. Yay! <laughs> Carob, this is <laughs> this is the girl I was talking about for a short top hat. These two pieces are carob. This one has the bark inclusion on it, and that could show up in the brim of the hat. If you, you're careful when you leave that, you actually leave that bark right there. This would make a really good top hat. And keep that. This would probably be where the brim is, so you can keep that natural edge because it does get really narrow here. And by the time you turn around and you're first roughing it out, this would be all gone. So you want to have the brim at this bottom. So we'll work on that. So let's get the. That's the perfect size for a, a top hat that we're going to make. And I've got this piece here for another hat someday. And we're just going to clean the face off again. And what I want to do now is just put a slight cold in, in the bottom of the hat here where the brim's going to be. I'm going to put that chamfer in there. It's got like a knife edge. And then I'm going to come in. That way it sits nice on the body of the gnome. You don't want it to have a, you don't want a flat or accidentally actually make a dome facing outwards or your hat's never going to fit right. Let me grab the body here and I'll show you what this does for it. So this helps the hat to fit right down inside the on top of the body. If it was flat, it could rock, not sit even, that type of thing. So we did this. That's we got a concave on the body, and then here and where they join. That's a good tight fit if you do that. Let's just smooth this up just a little bit more. We are applying paint to it in a minute. And now we need to drill it out. Same depth as the body. That's got that mark to then the lathe. We need to back this up a little bit. Let my plus my fill overhang it at least a little bit more than it should be. Let me turn this the lathe up a little bit more for the drilling. You don't want to drill a hole with your the pull of your tailstock overhanging way overhanging because it can cause it to go off center and you'll end up with an oval hop hole. Nope. All right, so now what we want to do is create the brim of the hat. I'm just going to grab my parting pole and kind of smooth this piece out a little bit. I got a lot of cool marks right in this area. I'm going to screwing it up. And I can do quick work of this. First thing I want to do though, is I want to glue my dowel in there so the CA glue has a chance to dry before I reverse turn this into paint gauze and I can finish the top of the hat. So I've already got dowels cut. I'm going to grab my CA glue medium. I don't want super thin, you want medium or thick CA glue. And the kicker. Take this stuff out right here. I get it from Visalia Hobbies where I live. It's pretty quality stuff. Now this is the little plugs. These are half inch pieces of dowel I just cut up. And we'll slide in there just like that. Half of it will fit in the hole here. And half of it will fit into the top of the, the gnome body. Uh, I've measured them when I cut them. They are pretty accurate. I just want to put some... See oh. Even stuck. Let me stuck. I'm grab some pliers. Always handy to have some pliers around. I'm trying to open up a yay bottle. 
So you don't want to put the CA glue on the plug. If you do that and you push it into a, a hole like this, it's kind of tight. It's just going to squeeze all that glue out. It's going to force it out. What you want to do is you want to just put the glue inside the hole. And just give you a little turn here. That. Looks like I got a little bit of a run there, so I'm going to have to pick a towel before it gets too bad. I'm going to soak in there and put it. It's going to be all covered with paint anyway. I'm going to grab my little ball hide mallet here to tap all that in. It's going to just pop loose. Just give me a second here, I'll clip it back on. I don't want the whole thing falling down on my head, so that's just good. Keep it clipped up there if I can. Wire. Wire. Sorry about this. I just want to make sure it doesn't all fall down. There we go. Oh, there we go. Got the plug. So I'm just going to use this, tap it in. The glue is still setting up, so I've got plenty of time. Oh, I'm going to spray the kicker onto the, this part, the dowel. And I just that'll speed up the drying process. And I'll just tap it in. Don't want to go all the way to the bottom, but I did. That's fine. Sometimes if the hole is a little too deep, then you're not going to have enough to hold on to in the pin jaws or have enough to actually hold it into the body of the, the gnome. Leave that there while we decide what we're going to do with the top hat here. So I'm going to measure how thick of a brim I want. That's pretty good right there. And what I'm going to do to make quick work of cutting this back into a hat, this narrow area, is I'm going to use a badan. I'm going to bring in my genius in. I don't know where to do this in my book. This is a European type style pool. Over there, they use it what I call upside down. But it works just like a scraper, it has a burr on the top. I just put a fresh one on there. Always want to use a fresh fur because they do wear out kind of quick. And it can make cutting harder if you don't have a nice fresh fur on there. And this, I think, pull up a little too hard for this. You want to cut this on center. Then you get down to the level you want it to be. You start up a little bit high above center there. Get the bevel rubbing. And just ease it in a little bit. This will take a quick work of getting this part done. I like to make a tall, nice tall top hat for the, the New Year's Eve guy. So I'm just going to kind of smooth that out using the point of the tool here. Just bring it over just like this. And I'm just going to clean that off. And chamfer that a, second, a little bit. And right there a little bit. I'm going to clean up the brim with the same tool. Make it nice and flat. Okay, now for the hat band. We need that a little bit proud. We're going to come in here and we're just going to make this a little bit deeper here. Not much. And I want the top part of the hat wider and I'm just going to make this a little more narrow right here. So I'm just going to keep adjusting it. I'm just going to take one more slight cut down this way. That way I have a place to part it off. There we go. So now I'm going to take this out of the chuck. I'm going to put my chuck in that has pin jaws. And then we're going to do some final shaping of the hat and we're going to paint it. I should park that off. <laughs> All right. 
getting ahead of myself. Same thing, you want to open up that curve. Just watch the jaws of the chuck, you're pretty kind of close to them. Jaws, get enough twist off here. What was the brown streak do that? It's all being covered up with paint. I'm not too worried about it. Alright, so let's get my spindle gouge. We're done with the roughing gouge. We're going to use a spindle gouge for this. We're going to we'll start at the top and we're just going to make a, a taper towards, the, towards that half end. So the, the brim is a little bit out of... I'm just going to do a little bit of trimming there. Here we go. Gonna round over the ends a little bit, soften those. All right, so what we want to do is just start in the middle, get the tool at about 45 degrees, get the double rubbing, then lift your handle a little bit and just bring it on down. Nice and gentle, light cuts. Come back a little further, do the same thing. And go all the way to the bottom and pick up that cut. These are just roughing cuts, it's just right at this point. But it's good practice to do smooth cuts, too. You can see that shape forming now that I'm looking for. There you go, that's a nice shape right there. Now I can just take this down. It's a little bit too proud for the hat band. I'm just going to bring the, use the wing of the tool right there. Put it right in the corner. Flatten that out. There we go. Next thing I want to do is finish the top up here. So I don't want to use a parting tool because that will leave tear out. And the paint won't sit in there very nice. you got tear out. You want a nice smooth surface. I'll use my spindle gouge and do a push cut from the outside in. And you can do a slight concave if you want or a dome. It all depends on what kind of hat you're looking for. You can make the top of the hat just slightly domed or slightly concave or completely flat. It's all up to you. Yeah, it looks like I still got a pool mark. I see some lines there, but I'm going to make sure it's not that grain. Right, right there. I've got a little bit of a ring for me. I want to get rid of that because that's tear out. And it'll look, it's hard to sand out. So I'll probably just do a, a draw cut with this using the wing of the tool. The bottom wing here, just, just beyond the point, right in this area right there. And almost close the flute. Not quite closed, but almost. And you just do a pull cut backwards. Or a, Get a little bit of vibration, that'll help clean up that surface. Get rid of any of that tear out that's being difficult with the push cut. But I call the, the, these, I call these pull cuts when it's coming towards me and push cuts when they're going away. I'm going to see how deep of a concave I've created. Come on. Two. Bad. I do want to round over the top just a little bit and get rid of some of that fuzzy tear out there. So I'm just going to gently bring my point of my tool and just kind of just rub it. It's very slight, slight cuts there. Nice soft looking cuts. I'm going to have a look at the brim and see how it's looking. That yeah, beach part is not in the brim, so that's that's good. I'm just feeling for any lumps or bumps or if it needs any final smoothness. So I'm just gonna do one final cut towards the headstock with that. It feels kind of rough right there. And this will help with the sandpaper, it won't take as long, and you can use a higher grit.
go. That's sharp again there where it's coming out. I need to round those two edges over just a slight, just a little bit. All right, time for sanding. So I'm gonna grab them 220 to start with. As I did, the cutting came out pretty nice on this one. I don't need to use anything lower as far as the grit goes. I'm gonna roll the speed of my lathe. I'm gonna overheat everything. My camera switch is getting dusty. It can take it. So I made sure I did some nice cuts here so I don't have a lot of pool marks to worry about sanding out. This is just to smooth it out so the paint sits nice on the wood. I don't have a bunch of tear out where it will show through the, the paint if you do. That way you don't have to put thick coats of, of acrylic paint on here to fill in those gaps. The tear out kinds of, sometimes leaves. And that can happen on the top of the brim of the hat. So I want to check that. Make sure there isn't any tear out. It looks pretty good. Back this way. Clean that up. It's good to get a, take your time and get a nice smooth surface on this with the painting. I just use the top of Dixie cups like this. And I can squeeze out some paint on the top of them and once they're dry, you can just toss them. Get some little bit of water on there. Got the paper towel. That way I can clean up the brush if I need to. I get too much paint on it. Got a little friend on my on the hat there. And we're just gonna turn on the lathe really, really slow. And we're gonna do it, make it go back away from us. That way it's not pushing against the bristles of the brush. Put it on there just like that. A little more paint on there. Just lightly work your way up to a nice coat of paint. And we're going to move the top of the hat here. See how much easier it is with it on the lathe because you're not trying to fiddle around with it with your fingers. I'm just going to put some on the corner of the brush here because I'm going to be coming up right up against a that brim there. I want to put the black on first and if you get accidentally get some black on the brim, the red will cover it up. I'm just going to come in here with the brush straight up and down like this, right up against the brim. A little bit of paint on the corner of it. Doing those white spots that I see still. So now we're going to do the, the brim here. Do this part first. Yeah. Well, the same thing. We're going to just going to put a little bit of paint on the corner here. And I'm just going to. Bring it in towards the brim. Okay. There we go. A bit of a piece of the brush coming out. A bit of that. Yeah. Hold the, the brush just on a straight up and down again, just like that. Bring it in. You got a little bit where the red's going to go, but that's all right. And then get my scissors up. We got a little bit of a feathering going on on the brush and the leaf spangler you can leave some weird lines if you don't cut them off kind of lines that you don't want them to be there we go 
and this kind of paint usually dries kind of quick. So I'm just going to come in here with the corner underneath here, underneath the brim. You don't have to go all the way to the box. So I got paint on the gauze, but that always cleans off. But this is a water-based paint. It doesn't need to take chemicals or anything to get it off. You just use bond liquid soap and, and water and a light, light brush. And it will come off. I just want to make sure I got it all black in the knees. Getting a little fussy, so I'm just going to do this with the lady off. Get it all down the knees. This doesn't have to go all the way to the dowel because the beard and the, the body is going to hide that white part that's left behind. Once it dries, if you want to, want to, you can add more paint to it. Once it's off the way, more brush. Yeah, a little bit of a few little spots there that you get filled in with the paint. I'm just going to fill those in with those little spots right there. Corner a little bit better right there. There's always going to be a few white spots that need to be hand painted in. There you go. The black off of there. And I got a smaller brush. Same type of brush. It's going to it a little bit better, but it's still good. It did have white on it, so I'm not too worried about the red that affecting any of the red. Give the bottles a good shake, those pigments flowing. This gets out. This isn't going to take us quite as much paint, so you don't need to waste it by putting a whole big, huge glob in the cup. Get the brush wet, dry off a little bit. Turn on the way, turn on the just gonna use my hand on the on the headstock here as a rest. We got a little bit of red on the black, but we can just gently fill that with more black. Same thing, we need to. Hold the, the brush vertical like this. And get into the corners. Can we have a question? The yeah, mic go on. I'm just gonna make sure this. So that that's that streak, that black streak, is showing through the wood through the. Do the paint, so I'm going to add a little bit more like this. Like a little bit better. But if you don't, try to get that covered up as much as I can because if you don't, it's going to look like that part of the black paint bled over. I'm going to mess it again. You need to come back in with the black. Just touch that up. Most of the water off of there. I like to do too. I'm gonna grab it. Yeah. There you are. Use a blow dryer to speed up the drying process a little bit. Get that out of my drawer. Plug it in. Here's somebody's mic open. This smell made quick work of getting this all dried up. You see how 
how it's looking is where you need to add a little bit, maybe with a smaller brush. So I'll do that in a second. Yeah, nicer brush here, more narrow brush. This would be great work for getting right in these little spots. I think we have a different one. A little bit better than that. We had a whole package of brand new brushes, and I bet you they walked off into the house. <laughs> Some of my boys. This one's going to look like better. This is an angled brush, as you can see. This will allow me to really get in there with the black paint. Clean this up. I just do a little bit just to show you guys, and then we'll finish this up. I'll finish painting it later. Just come in here. Dry. I'm going to put a little paper towel first, just to make sure before I put my brush in it. A little blob of red right here. That green is going through the paint. Just getting any wet paint off of there, and it wasn't very much. So. I mean, here's the point of this kind of brush. So this is great for filling any white spots. I keep touching the red, I don't know why. I've got some on the brim here. Quickly that just kind of makes everything in black. Dab that for a little more red. Then we'll be done with this part. Brush from the red here, get all the water off. Uh -huh. Most of it there. Just touch the corner of it, the brush. And we can just come in here and just kind of clean this part of it. And take a couple of coats to get rid of these marks. Just a couple of top sets. We'll do that later. I'm just gonna get some of that white spots off the top. I'm gonna come back with the blow dryer one more time. Just make sure everything's dry. Make sure you don't blow all your cups off the off the lathe bed. One more spot there. He's black. I don't know if you guys saw it. But I did. I definitely need it. I don't know. I'll get this good and dry. I can get a picture of that in here. I'm going to stick your coat here to cover it through that one. Get the water off the brush. Cover up that black green streak that was in the wood right here. Clean that some up. There we go. That's good enough for a demo piece, I think. I'm kind of a stickler for trying to get things perfect and you know, I have it carrying on during a demo. I shouldn't do that so much. <laughs> Just good to go, coming off. Then we'll get to making another hat. We'll make the Santa hat next. This is, let me grab the body for this guy. Comment that is. There we go. We got that guy, paint's gonna dry. And we're gonna make some noses and a horn for him in a little while. Let's get the Santa hat done.
We have a nice piece of burl right here. It'll make a really nice Santa hat. When I when I bake this for all, I'm going to buy this red and not use paint and all this pretty grain is going to show through. So it should make a really pretty hat. It's got a few voids in it that might show up in the hat when it's done. I'm not sure. So I was looking at this part of the, the piece when I was truing it up, not the corners, because it's not exactly cut straight. So I'd never get that screwed up looking at this. This is an old piece of maple, big use maple burl from Oregon. I brought back um, 2005. 17 years since I brought this in. That's pretty good. We're gonna grab a a larger roughing gouge. Screw this up because it is a bigger block. And you just want to give it a spin, make sure nothing's going to hit your tool rest. Make sure you got the right height on your tool rest. You want to grab that roughing out gouge here. It's an inch and a half. It says it's one and a quarter, okay? One and a quarter inch roughing gouge. And that's about the height I want it. My tool rest right there. It's all hitting pretty close to the same spot. That's good. Tighten there, everything down. I'm just gonna double check on the chuck. So I tighten all that stuff down. So I screwed it up. Better be safe. Sorry. I was able to snug it up just a little bit. I'm gonna start to lathe that low and turn it up. Whenever you put a new piece of wood in your lathe, you wanna start it at zero and then turn it up to speed. That way if it's gonna fly out or anything, it's gonna do it then at a lower speed to turn it on the lay that then set for 2000 RPMs that's kind of a shock to the wood and it can send it flying out with chuck. This way it settles in. So I'm at it about 1900 RPMs right now. We'll see how this cuts. Freshly sharpened tool here. Now I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you why I turned this at a higher speed. You're going to hear it more than see it. So I'm going to get it down to 9,000 or 900,000. And you're going to hear the choppiness in the cut. See that? Hear that? Not a very smooth cut at all. Especially on a piece of burl like this, because the grain is going everywhere. You want to get it up to at least 2,000 RPMs. A little faster, I'm going to turn it down just a hair, there we go. And you'll hear the difference in the cut. It's a much smoother sounding cut, because it is a smoother cut. Those corners are coming around faster, which makes it a smoother cut. So I'm going to do a peeling cut right here by the, the chuck. This is the, the side of the tool right here. Nice, gentle, no hurries, because this is a wonky piece of wood. So I'm going to stop it now and just see what the wood's looking like. I know it's not quite round yet. I'm about halfway there. I just want, with, with burls, you want to stop and check, make sure there isn't any stress cracks or anything developing in it. And this is looking good. No problems. So we're going to take it all the way around. So I'm going to get this end down here first, down the round, so I know how deep I need to go for the rest of the piece. Sort of like a depth gauge here. It's Sounding pretty smooth, so I'm gonna have a look. Right, so that looks good, nice and round. So I'm just gonna go make sure it's all level to that depth right there. And I'll probably switch roughing gouges in a second so I can get back into this area here. This one's a little too big to fit up against the, the jaws there. Not like my smaller one. 
That's why I like having two roughing gouges, two different sizes here. So it allows you to get down in the areas like right up against the chuck like this a little bit better. So this is going to be a pointy hat. I don't know what time it is. How far are we in? An hour and a half? We're doing good. The second half when I make the trees isn't quite as long as the, as the presentation is making the gnomes. Don't worry about having to go really, really late. So I'm just smoothing out the top here, getting it running through. Just like before, I want to drill this out for the dowel, like I did the other piece. Got the drill all set up, ready to go. Got it down to about 600 RPMs, just the speed, hold on to the drill chuck. We've got that mark still on there, I can see it pretty good. A little bit deeper, so I am going to create a cove there, so I need to go just a little bit deeper with it. I'm going to grab my spindle gouge. Put my crown handle too. There you are. And I'm going to do a, a cove, slight cove down towards that hole. I'm going to push cut here. It's best to use this instead of a parting tool because of the type of grain. It's just everywhere in a piece of bowl like this. Slight cove down in there. Totally glue in the in the dowel like we did before. This is going to be a completely different shaped hat. It's going to be one of those tall pointy hats. We made the, the cove just a little bit too deep, so I'm just kind of making it a little more shallow. There we go. Alright, see how pretty this wood is. Really. A little rough, but we're gonna sand that up really quick and get to it. We need to part this off. We're gonna do that now. Oh, we gotta put the, the dowel in. I don't want to forget that. We need glue and dowel. Mm. Yeah, this you see on the safe side, I'm going to protect my blade bit a little bit with the paper towel just in case it runs down. What is the length of this blank? This blank is... I can't ever remember all the lengths I make my blank. So this hat's... the blank itself is 90 millimeters or three and a half inches long. So we're only going to use about two and three quarters. The rest of it's in the chuck. I'll use this for like an inlay in a box. So this this part's not going to go to waste. It's going to go it's like an inlay in the in, in the top of a box lid. So nothing gets wasted in my shop. So the finished hat's going to be between two and three quarters and two and a half when we get done with it. Oh, we're gonna do this here. Same thing, we're just gonna put a little bit around the inside here. The whole bunch, you don't need to come pouring out of there. We're gonna tap it in with this mallet again, at least spray and sticker on it. On the dowel, speeds up the drying process down on the inside of the piece of wood. There we go. 
Have them out. That's good. One more. I can. I'm going to sort of start getting the shape in when it's held this way because it is more secure than using the pin jaws. So I'm going to start making that nice little shape in there. So I need to get my parting tool first. I just cut a relief cut right here for my tool to have some room to work in. I'm going to turn up my speed a little bit. Too fast. Hold on. There we go. I'm not taking it all the way down. This is just to give my tool some room to work. I'm going to get my half inch spindle gouge here. And I'm just going to start creating a, a just pretty much a, a straight line at first, and then I'll gently create a, make it into a code. I'm going to start right here at port with the tool, 45 degrees, the fluid is. Just do a cut straight and come back a little bit and go keep working your way towards the, the end here. And we're going to finish most of it, or part of it, when it's reversed in the pin dog. I'm going to start creating that, that shape now. And you can see how it's wobbling right here. That's why I want to finish it up when it's in the pin jaws. You hear that vibration. Because the wood is getting thinner, so it's vibrating more. And I see a little bit of a bump right there, so I want to get out of there if I reverse turn this. There we go. So I'm going to part it off and then we'll finish it. When it's reversed. And this so you you realize my 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 demos usually run about three hours, just to give you fair warning. So that vibration, I don't know if you guys can see that, created a texture in the wood. So sometimes that looks nice if you want to leave it in there. So I think I'm just gonna cut that out. Let's see how it goes. I'm gonna turn it around. All right, so I'm going to have my spindle gouge, and I'm just going to slow on as fast as I can. Oop. That is kind of wobbling in there. Let me turn on my wheel a little bit more before I turn it back on. Just give it a little twist sometimes to get rid of that wobble. Okay, right there, still. Bottom woods kind of not quite even. Get that up. Oh, kind of slow. That's better. Now they'll just when we finish up this hat, it'll just do everything back up. But the first time I turned it on, it was way too wobbly. Using the spindle gouge is going to get rid of that wobble and chew everything back up. So this is kind of quick. You just kind of work your way to the top here. You come in here and you're just kind of making that funny noise because it's wobbling. And once you get the solid wood, it's fine. 
further you go back and you go towards the top, the narrower the top becomes. Oh, and I said a fib. I said that was going to be the last of the drilling, but it's actually not. I need to drill the top of this pad out so I can put that little bobble on top. Just need to clean this area up. some flat spots so I'm just trying to get rid of those and I'll stop the lathe and see how it feels okay I have a bump right there I don't want to it's big enough where it's going to show up I'm looking there I can see it now Clean that off of there. You really don't want to go any narrower. That's good. I just want to clean up this part here using the wing of the tool very gently with the flute closed. You don't want it coming in with the flute open like this because you'll get a catch and it's going to flip your tool over and possibly ruin the piece and have it come out of the chuck. Just nice, gentle with the wings here. All right. I want to get this little bobber out of there, out of the way. Now I just need to put a kind of a big divot in here with the parting tool. That's where that, that the bobble is going to rest in there. Now we want to drill that out using the same drill size drill bit as I used for the, the nose and the bodies. Cut that. Just portion a bit out of the chunk. Here, this is what I'm doing. And this small one's just going to go right down in there for the after the, the bobble that we're going to make, just a little bit, dive in too. You don't need to go super deep with this. But just enough that, you know, it's going to secure that bobble in there. For wood like this, you want to really turn the weight down. Probably like 300 RPMs for the drilling. Just because of the grain in it, it's kind of all over the place. Should be far enough. We're just gonna back that out. That's good. I'm just gonna get this still tucked out of my health center here so I can put it away. We're just going to sand this up real quick and dye it red. And Santa hat. I'm backing up my tail center if you're wondering what I'm doing. Bringing the tail in out of the way. <laughs> All right, so. Looks pretty good. Now all we need to do is do a little bit of sanding on there. See if we got some 180. Candy, I use 220. 
Okay, we're going to do that. We're actually reverse back to this. So I'm going to start with 220 and see how it does. I'm going to turn it up just a little faster there. Got 600 RPM, just good. See how 220 does as far as cleaning up any tool marks. You want to start with wood like this, you want to start with the higher grits as, if you can. If you don't leave any deep scratches from pop, and then you have to just go through all the steps of the sandpaper. Kind of old and boring. So try to get away with doing at least no lower than 180. Let's see how that goes. Get a paper towel here, wipe that dust off. And I'll probably go over it with 320 before we dye it. That looks pretty good. The 320, and we'll be ready to dye it. I know it's getting late back east. I appreciate you guys hanging with me, whoever's in a different time zone than me. I always have to get used to that fact. So I'm on the west coast. And then six o'clock here, it's nine o'clock there. All right, so we're ready to buy this. I'll grab my brush real quick and clean this off. Put that board back up here. I don't want any leftover dust on really anything when you're dying the wood just gonna grab a paper towel like that off one more time before it's actually apply the dye board now always pop it to the side I hate it when I do this what? I was using it earlier. You guys saw me use it. What on earth can I have done with it? Well, take the towel time. Well, there it is. Look, I had the paint all over it. Let me get that paint off of it. Or at least the water cup so we don't spill. He's behind me here. Give me one second. I go. Uh, no, not really. I use an alcohol based dye. It would if I was using more of a. I'm just checking my colors here. Make sure I got red. So the alcohol-based dyes, like I, I use chestnut stains, and the alcohol in it, it's denatured alcohol pretty much, it, it evaporates really, really fast. So it, it allows it to dry. If you're using a water-based type of dye, it does raise the grain more than alcohol. And sometimes you have to just slightly cut it back to get the fuzziness away. To do that though, what I'd use, if I am using a water-based dye, is I, I get those white scotch pads and I cut them up like this, and I'll just take it over and it gets rid of that fuzz. Because it's very slight, and it doesn't take the dye off like sandpaper would, so. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh-huh. I hear some background. Has somebody else got a question? No? Oh, okay. So I'm just rolling this, or folding this up to a nice pad. You want to use a really nice pad, and when you're applying the, the dye, you don't want to use your fingertips, even on a thick piece like this. 
if what you're going to do is you're going to leave streaks in it. You want to use the pads of your fingers and rub it on just like that. It goes on much more smoothly and gently that way. And you just want to get somewhat of a decent amount of dye on here because the paper towel is going to soak it up. And with the pads of your fingers, you just want to take it across like that. This is really making the grain pop with a nice red, definitely. I'm just kind of put the paper towel down in there. Those little voids. So I have to get an like acid brush to get some dye on it and fill it in, get those little spots in. That's good. Up there. I'm just going to go around just a little bit. As it dries, I can see where it's thicker in some areas and or lighter and darker. That's because of the nature of the grain. It's going to, it's going to do that. It's going to soak up more in some areas than others. That's just the vibration of the, from the wood just rubbing on the paper towel and you're going to keep your nose. That's funny. All right, so. Grab me. Uh, somewhat paintbrush type thing here. I have another clean paintbrush. I'm just going to clean acid brush out of it. So I'm just going to come in just ever so slightly. I love these little bottles. You get them at Hobby Lobby. I transfer my thighs into it and it allows you just to put a little bit on there, fill in these little little gaps. And it's not really going to change the color of the, the wood any because it pre dyed it already. So you just spread it out real quick and you're pretty good to go. Just gently give the bottle a squeeze. And once it dries, we we'll go over it one more time really fast with the paper towel. And it'll, it'll make everything match. Right there. Of course, you can always leave those little voids undyed if you, if you prefer. It's so all up to your discretion as to what it looks like, of course. You really don't need to dive the inside where that hole is going to go. And it's done. Go over it real quick with the paper towel that's already got dye on it. to blend everything together and make sure. And this is pretty much already dry because of the alcohol base it's in. It only takes a, a 30 seconds for, for a piece like this to dry off. We're done dyeing this particular piece here. So we got it nice and red for Santa Claus. And set this aside. I'm going to make that one more top hat really quick for the other gnome here. And we're going to use this natural edge piece. That way I don't have to keep switching gauze back and forth. It's going to be easier this way. Get it to tighten up good in there. I love these jaws. They're serrated. So they grab a lot better than smooth jaws when it comes to grabbing square pieces like this. Yep, been true. Tighten it down. And we're just gonna have a, when we get it around, it's just gonna have a small section of bark right there. It adds a little bit of character to the hat. A little bit more of a rustic look. 
We'll get this turn for you. And then we can do both of them once I got the pin, finish them off. Then I got both the, the pin dogs in there. So. All right. So because it's like toppy like that, I'm gonna use my smaller roughing out gouge because it does have this fragile area here, and I don't want to be jamming a big old roughing gouge into it. The smaller ones may do a better work of it. Calm down, lady. All right. Same thing. I'm going to start in the middle, and I'm going to work my way towards the tail stock. And because it's got that gnarly piece in there, I'm actually been able to see the horizon. And I can see a shadow line where it's like air, corner, air, corner, and then I can see the area where it's solid wood, so it's gonna make it easier to turn this down the round. Oh, my progress moved on me, that was weird. It's nice and gentle because we don't want to be peeling all that bark, that pretty bark off of there. So we'll see how round we've got it. So we got flat there and we got a flat still there. We got a little ways to go yet. Before we got round, here we go. And this will be for the guy that's holding the reef. Alright, so we got it nice and round. So we got that natural edge right there. It's going to be in the brim of the hat, which is going to look really nice. We just want to take the rest of this down now. The peeling cuts. Start with the bevel rubbing and then you just lift the handle and you're using this corner or this side of the, the tool right there. With the bevel rubbing, then you lift the handle, it'll start cutting. You just want to do gentle cuts here. I can feel it grabbing. It's probably because it still has that natural edge part in it. And my edge of the tool there is catching it. I don't want to go any rounder, but we do want to keep this part. All right. We'll mark the brim with that pencil. How much we want to keep of that natural edge there. I need to get my that chewed up first before I go marking anything. So it is cut kind of crooked. This one's going to be natural. We're not going to add any paint, no dyes. So once this hat's pretty much done, it's done. You can add a like walnut oil finish. I, I prefer to use a food safe finish because these look like toys and children tend to pick them up no matter what age they are. You really don't want to any finish in there. It's going to hurt somebody. Looks pretty good. So I'm going to make that divot down in here. Drill it out. Glue in that dowel into this one. Turn down the lathe so I can drill it. This is going to be the last of the drilling, I promise. This is far and hole. Gonna take it in a little bit slower. You don't know how this sometimes the burl's gonna react to the drilling and back it out a little bit. Burl tends to get hot in the hole. You can seize up the bit in the hole. 
you want to do at least one with a shallow hole like this, you want to at least back it out just once. The chips don't get all bottled up in there and jam up the whole bit. That looks pretty good. So now I'm going to grab my pencil and decide how much of a thick of a brim I want. I do want to keep a good portion of this part. So it won't hurt to have a extra thick brim on this guy. Let's see, keep it nice. It's really cool, I like that. So same thing, I'm gonna grab me my badan and cut this down really quick like I did before with the other pop hat. I don't know, I should probably do that in there first. Just to Give the glue a chance to dry. Let's kick her out. My sticker bottle. Here's my glue. Give me a sticker bottle. There you are. Okay. Just protect my legs a little bit with paper towel. You can all you can do this all with production. You can just do all the drilling and gluing up over and over with the bottom of the hats. Yeah, I did the pose. Can't remember if I created that pose or not. Or that concave in there. I did out of habit. So, Good. One thing you've got to be careful of is you don't want to make the top top of top of the top hat above the brim so thin that you end up getting that that where that hole is. You gotta remember you gotta leave a little bit of meat there so it doesn't leak in the wood. Alright, so we're gonna get that out of the way. Badan in hand. Let's see how the badan does. Might have to use an easy wood tool. Let's see how the badan does first. If it doesn't well cooperate, I'm grabbing my easy wood tool off the shelf there. hardest cut on this is getting the the first slot cut and now you can just do half cuts which is much easier to do you can half the width of the tool just come back here that's where the brim's gonna be And we'll finish this up after we turn it around, put it in the pin jaws. Oh, I heard somebody's mic open. You got a question? I just a little bit of tear out right there. So I'm going to take my spindle gouge across that. Not much, because I don't want to take that bark off the rim there. I'm going to keep all that. It's going to be a rustic looking rim here. And what I like to do with these kinds is I, I actually put a, a narrow holiday ribbon on here. Do it around as a hat band instead of trying to color it. Move around this part area, so I'm just going to use the corner of my tool, or the side of my wing of my tool. Then I'm going to do a draw cut here just to clean stuff up while I can. Because once it's in the pin jaws, you really can't get to this area. Whoop. 
Looks like a piece of that part might have popped off of there. I hope not. That's so good. It's a little bit of a piece came off, no big deal. Oh, thought the ring came off. That's a disappointment. Grab the body of it here. Yes, I don't want to, yeah, I'm just going to leave it like that and just kind of sand that by hand a little bit and I'll give it a little more character. If I try to turn that out, the burn's going to be too small. It happens, especially on wood like this. Right. Parting tool, park this off. Widen that curse up a little bit. Now, if you feel a little bit unsafe about doing that twisting thing, you want to leave it a little thicker. It's nice to get one of these little drop saws here. You can leave that little part down in there a little thicker here, and you can just come in here and just slice that right off. And that's another, it's a safe way of doing it instead of trying to do the twist off part like I was doing earlier. This is running true. That's really pretty good. Let me get the board out of the way. Set this stuff out of the way there. There we go. I'm going to put the board where I know I'll find it next time. I need it. I need it. There. I will go. All right. Spindle gouge. I'm going to pick this latex glove off. Don't turn with latex gloves on. The wood has a tendency to grab it and pull your fingers into the piece, and that's not a fun situation. I know from experience. I slipped, kind of forgot about wearing one, but I went to go and kind of lightly sand the colored piece I made and a, na a natural void on it. And that natural void grabbed that latex glove and pulled my hand right across it and just cut the back of my hand. And up pretty well. I still have scars from it. It was like a year ago. All right, so about halfway up, just gonna start that cut, nice and gentle. We need to speed up the leg a little bit faster. And I'm gonna just double check on it on that tightness of this. It felt like it kind of loose there. Yeah, it is. And he just fell by the cut, but something wasn't. Quite tight. There we go. That's better. There we go, much smoother. And we're just going to do a gentle slope down to the brim of the hat. And do some draw cuts across the top. I'm just going to make this flat on top if I can. You might have a slight concave. If there's any tear out, you might be on the top here. And so oh, soften that edge. The wing of my tool caught that corner. I didn't move my tool out fast enough. I'm kind of cut where that natural edge is. All right, so what happened is that vibration left some marks right there. So I need to go over it a couple more times. Let's get rid of that. So I'm just going to do a push cut from top to bottom. Right. So I'm going to grab me a bigger tool because this that one seems to be vibrating. I'm going to grab me a very shallow detail gouge. 
It's a half inch. This really cuts down on the vibration on things like that when you run into things. You hear that noise there. So I need to lower the tool list just a little bit for this tool. It's not quite as vibrating. Only right here at the top. Gonna do a light cut right through here. And that noise you're hearing is those, that texture that last tool left behind. And it's the bevel rubbing across this. It's just not getting it. So I'm going to try using my small roughing gout. Sometimes that'll work. Get rid of all these kind of vibrate, left behind vibrations there. That's, that noise is the tool rubbing across that, those those lines, hopefully we'll get those cut out of here. Yep, looking down to do a really good job of getting rid of them. Some tear out right there, so I want to get rid of that. I'm going to come in here and do a slight peeling cut in here, using the corner of the tool, moving it forward. And then adjusting the shape a little bit to take care of that. I got rid of that hair out. Oh, you even made it worse. Oh, that's not good. Um, you run some paint sandpaper across that when the lathe is running. So I need to take down that hat band area here real quick. A little too tall now. Clean up the top of the brim. There's a little notch right here. Let me see how she's looking. I don't want to cut any more on the brim because then I can get rid of that part. That really tore up right there. So I'm going to put a ribbon around this. So I'm just going to cut all that away and see if that'll fix it. Kind of doing this on the fly. I don't really need to have this proud because I am going to put a ribbon around it. Good part of that out of there. Just one more cut. Medium cut here. I use the roughing gout because that was leaving the telltale vibration signs lines behind again. This is like the roughing gouge isn't doing that. This has just got a really bad spot inside the wood that you couldn't see before you turned it like that. So I'm gonna hand sand that part and just kind of rub it out. That'd be the best thing to do. And it's got a little bit of a oh, kind of a hill right here. I'm just going to clean that up. Kind of a bump out in the middle of the hat. Going to narrow this down a little bit better. Yeah, that looks better. All right. So to clean this up, I'm going to grab me a piece of 180. I'm just going to kind of work that out a little bit, or at least smooth it out so it doesn't look so jagged. And then we'll turn on the lathe and do some sanding real quick. I'm just going to get most of that out of there before we put it on the lathe for sanding.
So this is kind of a rusty cat anyway, so it's got a few marks and it's not going to hurt anything. Sandy with power. No, it just looks like a dip in the hat, so that's not bad. So I'm gonna grab me my walnut oil real quick. Just take a towel. Rub some oil on here. I'm not worried about getting this oil on my lathe bed. It actually helps lubricate it. There's no solvents or anything in it, so it's completely safe. This is strictly a walnut finishing oil. It's not the kind you buy in the grocery store. And there's only two people I know who make it. Uh, Mike Mahoney, Mahoney's Walnut Oil, and this one is Doctor's Woodshop out of Oregon. He does a uh, Mike Mahoney's Walnut Oil for a little bit more amber color, and this one is more clear. So I use both depending on the kind of wood I'm putting it on. Using, put it on. Put the towel down in there. This looks really pretty. This oil on here. Now I'll grab a dry paper towel and just buff it up real quick. And we'll be good to go. Put it on the hat. I'm just going to put a little extra oil right there on the fork and rub it in. Just a, a good soaking. I'm just going to add a little more character to the hat. No, that bark is really soaking it up. Really Alright. Got a clean paper towel. I don't know if I need the holiday trees. Good. I'm gonna run out of time here. I do need to make the show you how to make a nose and a bobble for a hat. All right, so this hat's completely done. We got two hats done. So what I got here is a half inch piece of dowel in my pin jaws. And I took in my veneer calipers. And I took a, one of the bodies of my, these guys here, because all the holes are the same size. I, Measured the inside of the holes. I usually don't use the drill bit because sometimes the holes can get a little bigger than the drill bit. A bit longer. So I need to make a little bit of a tenon on this side of it to go in the hole and then we'll just make a nice round bead right there for our nose. And we'll sort of do like that for the, for the arms that they're going to be, for the wreath holder, but they're going to be longer. So. Let's get this thing going here. It doesn't take too long to get these done. They're rather easy. I've got my veneer calipers handy. This is half inch spindle gouge. I'm just going to do a cleanup cut real quick across the surface here. Then I'm going to do a push cut across here because it's not cut all that great. Oh. Got, I had my flute open too much and it's kicking back on me. See what happens when you're just kind of a little bit grabby here. So I'm just turning this round, creating a bead there. And for this, I, I got the bevel rubbing. And I'm just going to turn this right in there like that. I probably should probably be using my smaller detail grab. Let me grab that. If I grabbing me so much, this is my quarter inch spindle detail gouge here and it'll do I think a 
better job at cutting these. I need to adjust my pull rest so I get a good angle here. And if they're a little rough, the sandpaper will get rid of all that kind of roughness that you see in there. So I need to peel this back. This is going to be the shaft that, or the tendon that goes into the hole of the nose. And we just need to take this all the way down just like that. Get that bead. I'm not too worried about how the back side of this nose is going to look. It's more to the front because the, the fur is going to cover up pretty much the back of it. So this is where you want a nice shape. It's pretty much in the yeah, so there's a kind of a bump right there in the center. I'm going to clean that up. So I'm going to grab me a small piece of 180 sandpaper. I should probably cut that off to kind of pair it. Don't need a really big piece for this. Oh, I just dropped the my blow dryer on the floor. It's not a good thing, and my ruler went with it. Just give me a second here, and I'll get these out of the way. There's a piece of 180. I'm gonna turn the lathe down. We'll sand this part first, and then we'll make the shaft that goes in, or the tenon shaft goes in the hole. A little faster than that. Now you can paint these. You can uh, use different colors of wood for the nose. I like to sometimes use a uh, ebony. So give it a different look. Sometimes I paint them white. I'll, I'll use milk paint to paint them white. Give it a more rusty kind of look to it. Or I'll just leave them plain just like this. All right, so that's good. Now I just need my parting tool. And my veneer calipers. And then start taking this down a little ways here. Don't need to do this at breakneck speed. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of going to do the measuring in the back side, just so I know I can get it right. Then I'll work that, that measurement up to the front. That way I've got a little bit of wiggle room there if I make the sides too small. It's barely, barely going on, which is normal for me. Why can't it ever just be just right? I don't know. You want it a little smaller than the hole. So it's going to expand when you add glue to it. Yeah. That's just about right. Just a little bit of wiggle room, so I can adjust it as I work my way up towards the, the nose end here. This really very small cuts here at the end of the pool. You don't want this popping off on you. Then we'll come in on an angle, just to put it over. And we'll check the size one more time. Make sure where we're supposed to be. Yeah, that's good. We just need to get my thin parting tool so we don't take a whole bunch of that wood off with the larger parting tool. Have the speed slow. And you can just hold on to the end of that while you part it off. It's not going to hurt you. Just like that. Now we've got a nice nose. We go in one of these guys here. And let's put them in the snowman here. There, there we go. We can go with it. So this would just go right in there. It's not going to go quite all the way in because you do need to have it a little proud because of the fur. If you don't have a proud, it's going to get buried down in there. But we've got a nice little nose for the Santa Claus right there. So, there we 
go. Ah. Now we'll get to the other cameras in a second. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna, still gonna create the arms, so I'll go to the three camera. And I've got two pre-cut valves here for the length I need. Making sure I got the right ones. Okay, there they are. So these need to be a little longer. Pull this out. And it's sort of like a nose. You want sort of like a bead on the ends. That way you can uh, also act as his hands. But you need to have the tendon a little longer. Just so it's it a little, it will sit out a little bit further from the beard so you can hold on to the reed. I put it in about halfway into the jaws and my pin, into my pin jaws there. And it'll bring it out a little bit more. We do need to have it a little longer. Back. Okay. Same thing, we can screw it up with the spindle gouge. Then we'll use that small detail gouge just to create the bead and stuff it seemed to work better than this large one for that portion of it. Tools are rolling around. Alright, so we'll turn up the speed. Yeah. With the bevel rubbing, lift it up till it starts cutting and just do a twist towards the top. If you bring the handle away from you and towards the lathe, the bed of the lathe. And let me go to three cameras so you guys can see my, all the angles I'm doing. Alright, so we got that pretty much round, so same thing, we're gonna Get this bevel rubbing, lift the handle so you can start getting a cut. I'm making this bead a little bit bigger just because it's his hand. A little longer, not quite as round, more of an oval shape. Then we'll take this down. And then we'll just do a cut in like that, clean that up. Now we can also make the shaft doing this instead of the parting tool. So we'll just check and see what we're working at here. How much more I gotta go? Not much. I'm just gonna keep using this small detail gouge to take it down. That's probably where I need to be right there. It's thinner than I thought. Eyes are deceiving me. I'm going to leave this a little bit bigger here. Just to give it the arms a little extra strength. So it's kind of a taper towards the size of the tenon we need there. Keep thinking. Every time I look at it, it looks like it's getting thinner and it's, it's like my eyes are really deceiving me tonight. It's gotta be it now. It's like every time I cut it, it doesn't look. It's acting like I haven't cut it. It's weird. What the heck? Well, 
So, it's mystifying things of wood turning. There we go. Inside there. Alright, so now I can just taper this down a little bit more here. Back of this hand. Just gonna. Not much, though. You want that strength there. Then we need a flat area here for it to go in the hole. You know, just a continuous flat from this point down. Now we just want to sand it up. I'm not too worried about the speed of the lathe at this point. I just want to get this rounded over. Doesn't little pieces like this really don't build up all that much heat. The hardest part is getting the center part sandy because it's actually moving the slowest. Good. You need your parting tool here, the main parting tool, or thin parting tool. There we go. Should have one hand made. Mm -hmm. Looks like that with one hand in there. There's this. Nose, go right there. So I'm gonna pull the nose out of Santa Claus here and just stick him in this guy. He's closer to being done. I'll put the nose in him. Like that. And you can see how long, how far his hands stick out. That way he's holding the wreath past his beard. We'll make one more of those real quick. I'm sure you guys will got a pretty good idea of how to make those. And then we'll move on to making a holiday tree. That way we can get at least one of these guys put together tonight at the end of the demo. Those of you that want to still stick around. It's 10 o'clock back east, I know. In late. Is it? What time is it here? Seven. Woo! Didn't realize it was that late. Yeah, sometimes my late my demos go four hours instead of the three. So we'll make quick work of this one. I won't talk so much. We'll just get it done out the door here. So you can get it done pretty quick. Closer than the last one, I don't think I'm going to have to stop it here. There we go. That was much faster than the last one. So I'm just going to grab my sandpaper here.
I'm gonna get the weight set up real quick to make a natural edge type of tree. Got a picture of pretty much what I'm gonna show you guys how to make. Been pretty cool. All right. So we've got. You guys can hold the wreath. We got his arms. A little bit off, but nonetheless, there he is. All he needs is a beard and the wreath, and he's ready to go. Yes, sir. All right. All right, here we are at the overhead of the, looking over the top of the lathe here. Got my spindle gouge, 45 degree grind. We're gonna create the horn for the New Year's Eve gnome. So let's get this lathe started up. This is a half inch diameter piece of dowel. And I need to put all my safety glasses before I start turning. There we go, all set. And we're just going to true this up first. I'm going to adjust my tool rest down just a little bit. It's a little high. All right. I'm just going to scrape off any excess wood here just to true it up. This tool seems a little dull, so I'm going to grab me a, a sharper one. Same size, same type of bevel, but sharp. <laughs> There we go, that's much better. So we want to make it dish out the center there a little bit, just so it looks like a horn. So I'm going to use, just going to do a push cut down towards the middle here, slightly. Let me switch cameras so we can just, we're just going to take out that center part, kind of round it out, make a nice somewhat deep cove as far as the tool will let you. And that's pretty much all you really need to do to go down in that, fur, that far. Just trying to grab that, just that little corner with the tip. So it's kind of skating back on me, just a, just a hair. All right, so now I'm gonna do a, a scrape out towards the outside just to clean that up in there. We can go even a little bit deeper using the point of the tool at this direction. We are turning in grain. All right. So I'm just going to do another shear scrape on the outside just to round all that over a little bit. On that rim of that cove. All right, so now we want to just make the shape of a trumpet. So we're going to start with the tool at 45 degrees and pick up that cut. We're just going to create a nice long taper down the length of the horn here. And what I need to do now is get my calipers and measure the, the opening on the gnome here. Give me one second. Edit this part out. All right. Start again or pick up where we left off after getting the calipers. All right, so we've got the little guy right here. We just want to measure the inside of this hole. This hole here, so we'll make sure that horn fits in there. 
So we just stick in the inside diameter of the calipers to measure the outside. That's what we need right there is just that little gap. I'm gonna tighten it down. Go down a little ways. So what I'm gonna do is create a, a type of tenon right here for it to slide into that hole because I don't want to make this area too thin and too weak in case it gets bumped into while we're turned while it's being handled. So I'm just gonna grab me my parting tool. And we're gonna start at this end. And we're just gonna start taking this down. We're just gonna see how we, how much we've about how much we've got. So we got a little bit to go, not much. We'll measure that. Still won't pop over. There we go, that's a good size right there. So I'm just gonna work my way up a little ways here. We don't want all of this sticking out, out of his face. That'd be a little long. Let's gently do this. Probably one more here. When we part this off, it's gonna take part of this tenon with it. All right, that's pretty good. I'm just gonna double check on the sides there. It looks like it's a little thick right there. And we can leave that as it is. And then we're just gonna adjust the taper a little bit more right here, just careful, light cuts. Some cleanup cuts here before we grab the sandpaper. There we go. Now I'm just gonna grab some, could be 220 or something along those lines. It's not gonna take much to sand this up. You just want a smooth surface for the paint to go on. So we're gonna paint this red. Or you can paint it any color you really want to. Alright, so that's pretty good. So I'm gonna slide some of this stuff out of the way. And we're gonna turn off the lathe here. I'm gonna brush off the bedways here. So I'm gonna put some paper towels down on there because I'm just gonna paint the piece while it's sitting on the lathe. So I'm just gonna lay some paper towel across the bedways here. Just to protect them from the paint in case something drips. You don't really need anything to put the paint into. I'm just going to put a dab on the brush right out of the bottle here. And we can paint from there. I'm just going to get some red on there. There we go. And we'll just kind of rotate it away from us once we get a blob of paint on there. Fill all that in. It's the party horn. You celebrate New Year's Eve. We'll scrape off all that excess. I used a little too much paint. Don't forget to do the inside little cove there. I'll do a little bit there just in case it extends past his beard a little bit. We'll just keep that red going just a little. We'll just scrape off any excess paint so it's not built up anywhere it looks pretty good so we'll leave it at that scrape off any excess paint put it in a 
cup of water, the brush. That way it, it'll keep the brush soft and it'll make it easier to remove the paint. And I'm gonna grab me a my blow dryer and just blow dry this real quick, get it dry faster. There we go. That way we can part it off. And I think I just blew a fuse. <laughs> That's all right. I think I got it. My heater's plugged into the same outlet, so I think I just kind of overloaded it. <sighs> all right. Thin parting tool. We're going to part this baby off. I'm just going to part it off about right here. All right, so now we got a little party horn for this guy. And let's put, grab him and just like this, and we'll just kind of slide that in there so he'll, the beard will cover a lot of that up. But he will be, got a nose and a party horn, so this guy's going to be all set for New Year's Eve. All right, okay, so we're. One back to the workbench and we will put these guys together now. All right, here we go. All right, so we made it over to the workbench. And now, as you can see, I've got some fur laid out. This will be the Santa fur white. Pick this up at craft stores or fabric stores. They always have a nice array of different types of furs. And see, we've got this kind here. This one's a beard I already cut out. And we've got this kind. So we've got three gnomes. So I'm going to use both of these. And now I'm going to show you how I cut out a piece of fur here. So what I like to do is just turn it over. See, I've already used a lot of this. I want to measure out the size. So I like to probably go about three inches across or eight and a half millimeters, whichever you prefer for the measurements here. I'm just gonna touch it with the marker there. Put that one marked there. So I wanna find the middle, because we need to cut a slot there for his nose. And now I'm just gonna come down here I'm going to line that up. Mark that again. Then I want to bring it over. I just want one inch. Right there. Let's put it right there. Right there. little long so what I want to do is I'm going to do it a different way here I want to mark I'm going to grab me one of the ones I already made because I've kind of lost track of what I'm doing that's one and a half inches deep so I need to mark it one and a half here which is right there okay so I already got that so now I'm just going to draw a mark one, one here, one here. Then I'm going to draw a diagonal from here. Here. So the bottom is going to be two inches, the top is three inches. And I'm just going to draw a line this way. This is where the slit will go. Now, cutting them out, that's a I found a, a nice way of doing that. You really don't want to take scissors and just start hacking at it because what's going to do is you're going to you're going to destroy all this nice long fur doing that. So you got to be really careful when cutting it. I like to use a razor blade, one of these little guys, a box cutter. I get these at Harbor Freight, really cheap. 
and they last a while so this is really good for cutting the back of the fabric you always want to cut on the back of the fabric when doing this this because if you try to do it this way first you couldn't put the marks and then you'll be cutting all that long fur off so you just want to gently bring it across the hold it I'm not gonna hold it I'm gonna grab me a straight edge just like this hold the straight edge nice and firm and just slide this down in that area here you can see if it cut all the way through it didn't on the top so you want to go backwards it's hard for the cut to start at the top there we go got a good cut going there before I go any further, I'm going to cut that slit. It's going to be easier to do it while this whole piece is still put together. So I'm just going to go backwards. Just like that. And that'll allow his nose to slip in there. Let me go a little bit longer. And then at the bottom, I like to put a slit right there. It'll, it'll helps allow it to go around the body of the gnome it's, so it doesn't fold up underneath. So I'm just going to put another slit right here. Put that up. Straight edge again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this around. I can start to cut on the inside and that way it doesn't bite me when I'm trying to just start at the beginning here. That's always a hard cut to get going. But it's always easier to start it in the middle there and just cut the material across. And then just test it. Yep, good cut. Turn it again, straight edge. I know this seems a little cumbersome, but after you've done these for a while, and you get in a rhythm, you can cut out a whole bunch really quickly. So I can go all the way through at this part. You'll get a feel for how the fur is acting when you're cutting them out. And there we go, we're good. See how it saved all that long hair by cutting it on the bottom. So we wanna pull off any loose hairs. It might have worked its way around it always does that along the cut line put the slit there nice santa beard there so we're just going to toss this to the side make sure you put it in a clean spot don't put it in shavings or anything because that always causes a a mess in your beard and especially white beards though any any little straggly things can show up and Make his beard look kind of dirty and not quite uh, snow white as we would like. All right, so we've got his little body here. So what we want to do is we want to put his nose in there. And I'm going to grab me my nose. So I've, you can, you can, like I showed earlier, you can wood turn a nose or you can use a bead like this. It does have a little mark there, so I sometimes paint these, but I'm not gonna do that today. Just acrylic paint and just paint it white or pink for our nose if you like, and put it aside and let it dry. I like to just stick them in there. Like that, and as you can see right there, you want this extension to be a little proud so you want it to extend out from the body, allows the beard to get around the, out the bottom of the nose there. So it's not sitting on the nose. So if this is all the way up against the body, it'd be hard to put the beard on. So I'm gonna grab a little, this new tight bond quick and thick. And we're just gonna put a little dash of it right in the little hole there. Doesn't take much. You want to put it in the hole and not on the shaft piece because if you put it on this part you're just going to scrape it all off and you put it in the hole so you want the glue in there 
already for you insert this so we're gonna set that aside let it dry for a little bit before I apply the, the beard to them one more thing I want to do is I've also got they go. do the same thing for the bobble on top of the head it's a bead we can also paint these and it'll just go in the hole just like that it's best to paint them before if you're going to do that before you glue it on but for demonstrations I'm just going to keep on moving and get these put together kind of boring watching somebody just paint acrylic on something it's not that exciting all right so I'll set those two this guy up, up to the side really quick and so now we want to go to the next one which will be the wreath guy right here these are, are the ones the pieces we would turn There, so we want to glue his nose in anyway. We're going to leave the arms out for this for, the, for right now. Another glue job here. This glue, it's, it sets up quick and it dries perfectly clear. So if you're worried about any glue showing up, you don't really need to worry about that plus this area is going to be covered with the with the beard anyway so you want to bring that out leave it a little proud it's like i did the other one now we've got our new year's fellow here so we want to get one more grabbing the wrong cup we've got Um, <laughs> so we got another nose. This is a small nose. We'll just stick it in there just like that. He doesn't need a real big one because we want to put his trumpet in there. So blue bottle. magic of recording and video I'm gonna allow those to set up for a little bit and boom I'll be back right before you even know it <laughs> all right now that we've got these guys dried a little bit oh there's this little horn we just made a little while ago it was right in there so we need to decide what beard we're gonna use for him the New Year's Eve guy I think we'll use this fellow for that so we're gonna did I really glue this hat on I did wow. okay usually I put the beard on before I glue the hat on but this will work still so what we need to do is just use some hot melt glue a glue gun just like this you want it a high temp this one has a dual temperature you want to use high temp for the material Clean that off. You gotta really be careful. That's using a paper towel just to any drips that might be coming out while it heats up. I'll get rid of that. You just don't want to make sure you don't get any of the glue on the fur right here, or it's gonna just mat up on you. So we put the glue on this fellow. First part of the glue we're gonna do is just above his nose here. Let's get that started there we go make sure you guys can see this yep All right just checking my screen there we're just gonna squeeze some glue out on this side and it does get stringy so you got uh oh there we go that stuff will break off once it hardens up I just want to put a little there We're gonna tuck his beard under his hat here. You have to slip for his nose in the horn. Just gently bring it up and around and push it on. 
just like that and it'll, it'll pretty much stick right away so I just want to tuck that in a little bit more I said I usually don't put the hat on until after I put the beard on so keep that in mind now we're just going to come back on this side here and we're going to apply some more glue just lay this part down we're going to move it up just a little bit get it under the hat before the glue dries we just tuck all that material up underneath the hat the same thing on this side here just put a line blue along this section make sure it's under the hat pretty well I like using the hot melt glue because it it's almost instantly putting a holding the beard on so you got a little straggly some glue right there so we're gonna pull all those little strings off and there we go we got a New Year's Eve fellow with a horn you still need to glue the horn in but I'm just gonna leave it as it is right now we can just pull it out like that and we'll put some just a dab of glue down there in that little hole that we can see yeah, we'll just go ahead and do that now. Why not? So I'm just going to take my glue. No, oh, I'm not going to use that because it's going to make a mess of the beard if it leaves a string of it. So it's easier to just take a some glue, either that fast quick dry or Aileen's Turbo Tacky glue. It's got a nice sharper point on it. So I'm just going to use it to get right down in there. I, I might have, maybe glued that horn in before I put the beard on should have maybe done that but I'm doing everything out of order today <laughs> find that hole stick it in there there we go all right mr. New Year's all right so we're gonna set this guy aside there we go now we got mr. Santa Claus here Got hits that glued in. Everything's glued together. That's all right. And the slit there. This is the beard we just cut out a, a minute ago. Move any straggly hairs you might have on your fingers. I'm just gonna put a line of glue right there. And on, on this other side there. And this is just. You know, if you're doing these production, just just sit down and apply beard after beard after beard. Doesn't take much to get these on. There we go. It's already stuck on there. So we're gonna come up over here to the side again. Just like we did the other guy. Line of glue there. Doesn't take much glue to hold this stuff on. that material up under his hat there we go we'll do the same thing on the other side we'll put a little bit right there because that's a little long and we're gonna come down just put a little line right there and tuck this under just like that hold it just for a second Got, got our snowman right there. There we go. Make sure you guys can see him. Make sure I'm not off camera. I'm gonna adjust my camera down just a little bit. There we go. All right, so he's all done. Now this guy, we've got arms for him. So we gotta make sure we cut the right holes for this guy. We're just gonna kinda Feel where they are. Rub my fingers across this beard here. Feel that one. So I'm just gonna keep my thumb at that spot. And I'm gonna grab that razor blade here. Just cut a slit in the material. It's right here. I'm just gonna go 
kind of a cross type of opening. We're gonna grab one of his arms and we're just gonna make sure it's gonna go through okay yeah there we go now we're gonna put that beard right back on there and we're gonna find that other hole should be right there so my fingers are marking the spot so I think we're just gonna put an X a cross hatch there I'm gonna test to make sure his, his hand's gonna go through there. All right, so now we need this to glue the beard on. But before I do that, I'm gonna put some glue down inside the holes there for his arms. I don't put my elbow in that. Just a little bit there. A little bit there. Just gonna kind of tap it so it goes in the holes. There. We're going to grab one of the arms and just kind of go in and out with it here. Just kind of get rid of that blob. But don't leave the arm in there. This is just so the glue, the beer doesn't stick to this. There we go. Now we got the glue down inside. I'm going to scrape some of that off. And now we're ready to apply the hot melt glue. There we go. I'm going to tuck this guy's beard. I really love this fur. These look really nice on the gnomes. Kind of stick it on there, get it tucked in there like that, and under like that. First thing I want to do, I'm going to put the arms in first, just to get them settled in. So I'm going to mark, find that hole. Just kind of move it around till you see it. Okay, I'm missing it there. Got it in the right spot, so we just gotta feel around for it. Hmm. All right, so we got that going. There's a bird doing some cats. Gotta find that little hole. Huh? Open that back up so we can find it a little bit better. Find that hole here. It's not this difficult. We're just doing this in real time here, so. Where's that? There we go. There we got it. Stick that in the hole. Oop. Come back in a second, but we want to put the other arm in the other guy here. So we need to find that hole here. Move some of that fur out of the way. Stick the hole, this arm through that hole. And we're gonna stick this arm in there. I don't know why it's fighting me. Oh, popped out of the hole. That's why. Right, there we go. First, kind of blocking them there. There we go. Come on. Get in there. All right. And we'll comb all this guy out once we got the arms and everything all set. Straggly right there. We need to bring up the, as much as we can, bring the beard up using the hot melt glue. 
just going to stretch it up into that area. There we go. Still a little bit. We can put right there because it looks like it's sticking out just a little bit. That part kind of came loose. So I'm just going to gently just a little bit of hot melt glue right down in that spot. Tuck that in there. Come back around this way. We'll straighten all this hair out in a second here. See, it's already... Once you play with it a little while, it'll comb out. Just gotta rub your fingers across it. Put that right there. Alright. So this guy's gonna hold on to the wreaths. So I've got I'm gonna put a wreath over both hands there, like he's walking along and carrying them. Right now, he looks like he's got three noses. <laughs> Pretty strange, huh? Gonna pull all that loose hair off of him. Kind of straighten his hair out. See, he's looking a little bit better. Not as straggly once I play with the hair a little bit. So I got some wreaths here from the craft fit or the craft craft store. I got these at Hobby Lobby. They get kind of tangled up sometimes when you pull them out. We just need two. And I'm going to trim off these little long things because they put them on there in case you want to use them as ornaments, but I don't need that. Just gonna snip, 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 snip these little things off. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to slide that out of the way. Got our so he's gonna hold these with his hands just like this. We're just gonna kind of pop them on just like that, and they slide on. And they really you don't really need to glue these on. So they'll just pop over those hands of his there. So those straggly hairs. All right, so we got our wreath gnome right there. He's just walking around carrying a wreath. Very, very cool. All right. So we're done putting these guys together. So let me run back over to the lathe and we'll have a look at all three of them. Oh, let's do that. We can do that here, I guess. And let me adjust the mic or the camera and we'll have a look at all three of these guys. So. Give me one second. All right, so there we go. We got all three of them made. Let's turn it towards the camera a little bit better. All right, we got Mr. Wreath. Looks like if somebody walking down the street heading for a party to hand out wreaths. We got Santa Claus here, ready to come down the chimney. And Mr. New Year's, ready for his party with his horn in his mouth already, ready to go. So. All right, I think that's it for today. We had a good time. I hope you enjoyed it. I sure did. Gnomes are a great project to work on and 
like I showed, you can make them look all kinds of different ways. I've seen them made into Vikings, all kinds of different things. So I hope you enjoyed the demo and we'll see you next time. Catch you later. Bye.